I'm just going to quickly go over these reminders. I saw a question in the chat about learning communities specifically, so I'm just going to quickly go over these. Be sure to check your projections. Those, um, you would have gotten an email from Josie regarding those projections. They're located on the registrar website under faculty and staff and then reports and it says projection information there. So make sure that you are checking the projections. Date patterns, those are your date patterns in unit time. So for anything that's non-standard, which means full term, first eight weeks or second eight weeks, make sure you are checking your date patterns repeatedly. Um, I'm talking specifically to nursing, chemical engineering, um, trying to think of who else has some oddities out there. I'm thinking chemistry might have a few oddities. Um, CS maybe, make sure you're checking your date patterns and then check them again. Um, use the sign up for the help session. So that's that sign up genius that we've been using. Um, so basically right now it's just help sessions all the way through the 14th where the data entry is due for the need room. And then after that, the um, appointments will be to solve your departmental rooms. Um, so we only have a week in between when you get your assignments for the need room and then when your departmental, to departmental rooms are due. So in between that week, that's when you're gonna make that, those appointments to actually solve your departmental. Some of you might not even have anything to solve and that's fine. It should be very little, not like the typical, what we would normally do in the lab. Um, so make sure that you're looking at the Sign Up Genius and signing up for that. Learning communities are doing Curriculog on Friday. Um, I have a list here, very few learning communities for spring. Um, if you were involved in a learning community, you would have gotten an email from Haley Cutler regarding that and um, telling you you needed to take action. So if you did not receive that email, that probably means you do not have a learning community for spring. Um, I've only gotten four completed thus far. Um, so I see, still see some engineering courses out there, chemistry, stat, management, um, two EDPSs, biology, entrepreneur. So. Um, very few learning communities for spring, but there are still some outstanding that are due on Friday. Um, the new rooms for physical facilities. So that's that meeting that you guys had with Michael Gulich about a month ago where he went over if you needed to add any new rooms in for spring that had not been assessed for COVID. Those are due to him by Friday. And then make sure that you are emailing. We don't have a system since this is such a strange build. We don't really have a system in place of um, right where you tell us that you're done with data entry, like how you normally would do for large lecture or departmental. So please email us. When you feel like you are done with your data entry for need room, please email us three, me, me Betty and Robin only, no one else needs to be included in that email and let us know that you believe that you're done with your need room. And remember, again, those are due by October 14th. Okay, I wanna state that I am in the test environment. So this is not production, this is not live, this is a test environment um, I don't, because I'm gonna be using AAE. So if Lisa Crane is on the call, please don't have a, a, a panic attack. This is all in the test environment. Um, first and foremost, I want to tell you guys that we have added two new rooms um, for spring 2021 to try to um, be more transparent to the university and to the students about uh, particularly sync on um, synchronous online and asynchronous online. Okay, so again, that define that definitions are synchronous online is meaning you you and the instructor are meeting basically at the same time, a scheduled time, and you're learning the material at at that time. Asynchronous is meaning you can go this I the student can go anytime and view the material. Okay, so just two basic definitions of what that means. So. You as the scheduled deputy, if your faculty members tell you that the course is gonna be online, your follow-up question should be asynchronous or synchronous. And then if they say synchronous, then your secondary follow-up question should be what time and day are you wanting that? All right, so we have two new rooms. Um, one, is lit, one is called async online and the other one is called sync online. Async online is in all of your buckets right now. I did that this morning. I put that room in everyone's departmental bucket. Sync online is in the need room bucket. So if you're wanting to use sync online for a course, make sure your manager is need room. Why? Because we need to look at student conflicts. If your faculty member is wanting the students to uh, log in at a certain time, 
then we need to be sure that we're not scheduling other critical courses on top of that course that they need to be taking. So we need to be able to look at those student conflicts. Okay, so two new buckets. One will be in your departmental, two new buckets, two new rooms. One will be in your departmental bucket, one will be in the need room bucket. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the examples. Are you guys still seeing unit time? And I have AAE 200 pulled up. I can see Tisha, Brenda, and Rhonda. Can you guys shake your head if you can see AA 200? Great, okay, wonderful, okay. Okay, so the first one we're gonna go over is traditional face-to-face -face scheduling, okay? And I took the liberty of creating separate configurations for AA200, AAE200, and I labeled the configuration the example that we're gonna be shown. So this is a traditional face-to-face -face section. So this instructor is saying that they need, um, they need, a, they need a room, uh, they're meeting at a certain time and day and they need a room. Okay, so this is your standard setup of what you've pretty much doing the whole time. So we're gonna go here and, oops, I need to lock it. We're gonna come down here, we're gonna go here, we're gonna edit the class, and they really wanna be in arms, so you're gonna strongly prefer that. Again, I'm as, as the session admin, so I see required, you will not see required. Um, and then you're going to update. So we've set that up that they wanna be, they wanna be teaching, these are the preferences right here. They wanna teach sometime in the afternoon on Tuesday and they really want ARMS B061. I could have also put ARMS as the building. They really wanna stay in ARMS. Let me show you that instead of just talking about it. My room group, maybe they wanna stay on the north end of campus. The north end is the engineering side of campus. So I could strongly prefer the north side of campus. Maybe I could put a couple buildings in there. This, you know, they really like ARMS. They like camp. Again, these are preferences. So this is just your traditional face-to-face, -face, what we always have done, putting the preferences in, um, and then they'll, they'll get scheduled at a time in a room. Ignore this online, because I'm working in fall 2020 since we've already solved, I had to do that. So this would be Tuesday 8.30 and arms B61, okay? So this is just your traditional face-to-face. -face. All right, let's move on to the hybrid. Hybrid, let's talk about hybrid. Hybrid is meaning that there is a component, they need to meet face-to-face, -face, and then they also need to meet online. Um, so that is your hybrid. When it's meeting face-to-face, -face, there's a component of face-to-face, -face, and there's a component of um, distance, okay? So that is your hybrid. Okay, so um, that is how I set it up. I wanna go into this edit configuration. I'm setting it up as a hybrid instructional method. This is in when you're setting up the configuration. I've already done that, but you, this is when you would traditionally go into your add configuration. You set it up as an instructional method of hybrid. You're putting your limit in there and then you're adding a lecture and a distance because that's what the hybrid is. Now this could be lab in a distance or lecture in a distance. All right, we're, now we're gonna actually go and give it some preferences here. So now we're back on hybrid. So then for the lecture portion, one time a week. All right, so we're doing one by 50. That goes off of your minutes per week that you put in there. When I set up the configuration, I said it only needed to meet 50 minutes for the lecture portion. So that's only meeting one time a week. So I'm gonna say, oh, you know, they really want to do Tuesdays, okay? Little tip, you can select, see how I did that? If I select just the day, it, it adds the whole row, okay? So just a little tip and trick there. Um, so they wanna do Tuesdays, so I'm strongly preferring Tuesdays. Again here, I'm going to do the north side. They really wanna stay on the north side. They really don't have a building preference, so that's good there. I'm updating. Um, then for the, the distance portion, here's that new room, you just saw it. Async online. That means that they can go and watch the distance portion whenever they want to. So I'm giving it async online. And then you can see here, I've actually scheduled this so we could see what it looked like. So in unit time, it's gonna show Monday. Okay, they didn't get their Tuesday. Monday, 9.30 in arms. And then for distance, it's gonna show async online to the students, indicating to them that they will be doing their work online asynchronously, okay? That's an example of the hybrid. Okay, now we're gonna go to a high flex. Now, I know that a lot of people group it in with the hybrid. The high flex is something that's new that just actually started 
being talked about this summer. An um, EAPS professor actually coined that term um, high flex. So let me tell you why, why he coined the term high flex. So what he was going to do is he wanted to teach 600 kids. So, and as you know, 150 is the COVID capacity, but he wanted to rotate those kids um, 150 at a time every other Tuesday, Thursday, okay? And then, but at the same time, the students that were not in class, what were the, he wanted them to watch them, watch it online. So that all 600 people were tuning in essentially to the same time, but only 150 were coming to class at one time. So that's what he coined the term high flex. So high flex is essentially face-to-face uh, -face traditional except for you'll notice right here that we put the room ratio down because this um, particular section wants 300 kids. Well, 150 is a max in a room. So the room ratio has to be set down to allow it to get scheduled into a room for 150, all right? So you can see here that it's assigned for Tuesday at 4.30, class of 50, 150 people. So that's an example of how a high flex situation might work out. Um, that's something I really want you guys to talk to us about. If you have um, your instructors or faculty members wanting to do a high flex like this, reach out to us and make sure we understand exactly what's going on. Now, there could be a situation where, um, like I know pharmacy, pharmacy, we had talked about a situation where the faculty member has 150 people in their class, but they don't want a room for 150. They already know up front, they only want to do 50 people at a time. So we don't want to give them a room for 150 if they're never going to have 150 people in the class. We want to give them a room for 50 people and then they're going to rotate those, they're going to rotate. So that would be set up a tad different. So again, if that's something that um, you hear from your faculty member, that's something you need to work directly with us on. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to distance asynchronous. So again, that is saying they are just um, can log in at any time. For this configuration, we want to see the distance schedule type, okay? That truly is a distance schedule type. And you are simply giving it the room async online like we discussed before. So right now, you might have already started working and you might have just put your room as online. You can go in now and change that to async online to be more transparent. If, if you don't do it, we're going to. So it would be nice if you guys could take action on that. So very simple, right? It's in a range hours, but it's gonna show us async online. And I'm gonna show you the banner view for all of these in one second too, because that's important, because that's kind of where a lot of the trouble started in fall is, you know, we have two scheduling, two systems of entry for students to register in, and they both kind of show two different things. So this is trying to get them both in sync um, to show the same. So that was the async online. Okay, now we want to do a lecture synchronously. So I'm pointing this out because um, this is where a lot, I did have some questions like, well, should it be distance synchronous? We want you to put lecture synchronous because they are getting the lecture material synchronously online. Okay, so basically rule of thumb, if it is asynchronous, it should be a distance schedule type. If it is synchronous, go ahead and use your traditional lecture lab lab prep, whatever the schedule type is. Okay, so for this particular example, this is a lecture that's going to be taught synchronously online to the students. So I'm going to, I would be clicking it. I would, I am going to give it a time preference. Um, I'm going to, and then, but the room is going to be sync online. So that's where I said that this room is only in the need room process because since it has a time related to it, we need to see those student conflicts up front. Okay, so the sync online is what you're going to require here. All right, so we're going to update and then we're going to come back out. I've already scheduled it. And as you can see, nicely, it got scheduled Tuesday, Thursday, noon in the room and building is sync online. Okay, that means it's synchronous online. One more to show you. This is the OL sections. All right. Now we got to come back out here. I'm going to the OL. Remember, we recognize our OL by the suffixes. OL suffix. These are for those online learners that are not coming back to campus. Okay, they are at home. They are not on campus. They are not residential students. That's how the university defines the two groups. You got residential students and you have the online learners. Okay, so who here is AAE 200 OL. When you go to set these courses up, some things to remember. 
when you add the configuration, your configuration name should be online catalog, okay? The instructional method is online. You set your limit, instructional type is distance, okay? Another thing that was just added that I believe Keith talked about on, in a Thursday meeting is the section ID, and I, I also emailed you guys about this, the section ID needs to be OL now. That's an additional identifier, particularly on the banner side because when um, these courses go over to banner, banner does not recognize suffixes. So it's not gonna show OL on the banner side. So this is an additional identifier, the OL is. If you don't know how to add, um, change your section IDs, that's over in banner offerings. You click banner offerings, you're clicking the course, let me scroll over here. You're hitting edit, and right here is where you can change your section ID. So you would do OL1, OL2, what, whatever it is, okay? But make sure it's OL number, right? Okay, so, and then that's it. And then you're giving it the async. So then let's go into the section now. And then for this one, again, you're giving it the asynchronous online room for the OL sections because they can log on there in all different time zones. They're logging in at any time. And that's important to note. Keith uh, sent me an IM right before this and said, please make sure you're noting that these OL sections, the university wants to see them as asynchronous, not synchronous. Another great bit of news for the OL sections, hot off the press, we will be doing subparts for OL sections in the spring. I can hear you guys cheering. Now, we still have to work out the details of what that looks like and what that means. I'm gonna be reaching out to a few of you individually, probably today or tomorrow, to talk about what that's gonna look like. But we, we uh, Keith did get the clear from the administration that they will be allowing subparts for the OL sections. All right, so now real quickly, we're gonna go look over in Banner to see what it looks like on the Banner side of what we just did in Unitime, okay? So I'm in the lookup classes. We're gonna go to AAE, we're gonna go to 200. Can you guys see the banners? Can you guys see lookup classes, Tisha? Okay, great. Okay, so here we go. So this one is the synchronous online. See here, you can see the synchronous online is there. Async online, the room is there. Here's the hybrid section where you have it in the room and then async online. And you can tell right here, it's subparted, they're linked together. Okay, here's the traditional face-to-face. -face. And then here's the OL section. You can see right here with the section ID, OL2, see? Async online. Here's also the note for the OL section right here. Also, just to note, this is something we're also um, currently working on. This is the test environment. So this is something I'm testing right now. This, we are thinking about putting um, this website. There's a website being created. Um, Holly Keckler from our office is working on it. And um, it just goes to our website right now because this was a test. But we're thinking about putting a, what, a creating a website that basically defines what synchronous, asynchronous, hybrid, high flex mean and putting it on a note on all the sections so the students could go out there and click that and then they could get a better definition of what they meet, of what the course is that they're scheduled in. That's to be determined, um, but we're just testing that out. Okay, all right, I'm done with the visual show. Let me stop sharing and let me go to some questions. Now, when should I choose need room? But no, um, there is no large lecture. Large lecture is not a thing. Please remember that. You only have three buckets. Um, you only have three buckets this time. Need room, departmental, computer lab. Everything goes in one of those three buckets. And if you don't have any rooms in your departmental bucket, that means everything's going into the need room bucket or the computer lab. So there is no large lectures. Um, room preferences can be listed for any room. Uh, no, no restrictions on what rooms you can request, Rex. We have a faculty who wants to offer a lecture asynchronously and labs as high flex. How should we classify this? I would think that would be a hybrid, um, Tisha, and we can walk through that with you, but that would be um, a hybrid where you would schedule the labs. So the labs would be the schedule, would schedule and then the lecture would be async online. Uh, yeah, I can provide screenshots, Cindy, after this. 
Um, and then also it's, it is, it's recorded, but yes, I will provide screenshots for you on like a banner view and a unit time view. Do you think that will work? Hopefully. Okay, some parts are um, when it's a lecture and then a lab and a recitation. They're subparted. So there's different parts, different schedule types for that course. That's what a subpart is. Um, I did show you, show me again how to put the OL2 identifier in. Okay, let me go back. Okay, um, Susan, I'm over in Banner. I go to Banner Offerings on the left-hand side. It pulls up the course. I'm hitting edit on the right hand side and then the section ID can be changed right there and then I hit update. This is also in the data entry manual and you guys can always find that under the help section in unit time under manuals and then the course timetabling data entry and then you can just do a control F and look for section ID and it would probably show you there as well. These are just more tools in your toolbox. Oh well, sections, do we need to edit the configure? Oh. Do we need to edit the configuration so that the number of rooms is one instead of zero? Um, no, Phil, let me show you that. Um, that was a question I did have and Tomas and I talked through that. Let me go back. So um, right here, so you can see here the minutes per week are zero. Let me look, let me look and see the number of rooms is zero. Okay, so I'm not asking for a room, but when I actually go to the section um, and I edit it, you actually do have the option to put in a room preference and that does flow over to Banner. So you actually can keep the room needing the required room at zero and you can still put a room preference on there that does flow over to Banner. How do we have to request computer labs for exams? I'm not sure, Susan. That would be a question for Teresa Morgan. How do we offer OL students the same course and instructor that the online, how do we control the enrollment? Yeah, Linda, I, unfortunately, when the OL, when the university decided to still do this, we're in the same boat as what we are for fall, what we were for fall, where it's just going to kind of be this back and forth. Um, there is an OL projections out there on our website with the regular projections to try to help you identify how many possible students might need the OL section. But, and that might be something you might need to work closer with Josie on, Linda. That's not necessarily on the scheduling side, but yes, that's, it's, we are going to be in the same situation, unfortunately, than what we are right now. Okay, for face-to-face, -face, can we enter preferred times in room? I thought we entered what we can't. Yes, sure, Vicki. Thanks for calling me out about that. I really want you guys to put in what you don't want to teach, not necessarily what you do want to teach. And when I did the visual, I did put in strongly preferred. So completely my fault. Please try to veer more on the other side of what, you poss what the faculty member does not want to teach. Yes, so sorry about that. Um, I don't know why Runa Time has been running slow. They are, but they have been doing a lot of updates, so it could possibly be that. Um, Clark, we have a faculty who wants to offer lectures in person and labs to turn in assignments only. Optional help lab. Well, so would that be um, a lab prep or a PSO, Clark? It makes me think that if they have an optional help lab that's more like a PSO, we might need to talk about that offline, Clark. Um, is there a target percentage for how many? Uh, yes, uh, Tisha, that is that in um, course modality dashboard that was talked that's been talked about in a couple other meetings that Josie and Steve Lips team is working on. Um, that should be available soon, and that's the that talks about the target percentages for the university. I don't have that off the top of my head because that's not necessarily our area, but I think it's. Um, uh, basically at least half, I think, need to be face-to-face -face is what the university is targeting. But that course modality dashboard should be up and running soon, and then that will help with that, with that question. Um, yeah, you can do both, absolutely. What they do, you could do some strongly, they really strongly prefer this, but they don't want this. You could do a mix and match. It's just, we basically, what it comes down to is we just need some options. We need more options than what we normally have. And again, evenings. And uh, Phil brought up a great point this morning. I was under the assumption that evenings was available to all of you, and I don't think it is. So I'm going to make it a standard for you guys to add to any section. So I'm going to do that today where you'll have the evening availability for any section, because please be thinking about that with your faculty members if evening is a possibility. Um, 
Beth, I have not got an answer to that yet. She asked if OL sections can be offered if it's not being offered as a residential section. I did give that to Keith and I don't think that has been, um, last I heard from our Monday meeting, it has not been decided yet. So still more to come about that. If we have an asynchronous OL offering, would you need to put in a room selection? That's what we just went over where um, I just showed you about how it, you, would, uh, you don't need a room, but you can edit the section and add a room preference of async online and that will um, be appear on the schedule. That was me and I said, why would you need to? That's what I didn't understand. You showed it, but I'm confused why you would need a room. Oh, it's just more, yes, it's, yes, absolutely. Totally understand that. Again, it's just that transparency. We heard a lot from students this fall that um, were just confused. It's just being a little, trying to be a little bit more transparent um, for students' sake. So do you need it? No. Does distance probably make, make that assumption? Yes but are we doing things we wouldn't normally do? Yes. <laughs> um, so I guess that's kind of another weird question I have is students. So we had a bunch of classes in health sciences, which probably other people did too, where there are in campus or on residence classes, but OL was attached and they were being taught through Brightspace together. Yes. But apparently students have been complaining that they're being required to be present so it's like a synchronous offering and somebody Ooh. told them ol offerings can't be synchronous which i'm kind of confused correct. then why they could be wrapped together in bright space um, if i'm sharing a bright space page um i have to teach it the way i'm teaching it everywhere so well right but i thought bright space the bright bright space was uh, just a, a place to house the course content so every all parties could view the course content not necessarily at the same time right I don't know. I mean, I'm not teaching it, but one of our fa some of our faculty have, and we've heard that students have been complaining, not about us, but other things in, health, in the college that are making them attend synchronously like a WebEx session. So hmm. well, that's unfortunate. While they're definitely not, definitely not what the university is it, it, it intends for those OL sections. Um, that could be, okay. I guess I don't think that was clear. Yeah. Oh, you know, when they were throwing this oh, at us over the fall or over the summer, I don't think that was clear. And I think they should have been a lot more clear about that because I'm assuming a lot of our faculty decided to do these things and put them together. Yeah. Thinking that they could teach them that way sure. and that if that was not the intent, it should have been very clear that that should not. So you mean from the provost office? I, I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying yeah. that I've heard students have been complaining because they've had to be synchronous sure. in these OL classes, but they were told, faculty were told they could combine them yeah. on Brightspace. So the assumption is if I'm not doing a distance course here, I may not be taping my lectures. So having sure. them attend via a WebEx session would be sure. the way it works. I actually noted, not yeah, the, I've noted that Lisa, I'll take that to Keith so he can take it to the upper administration, like the provost office, and maybe they need to set some expectations uh, up. So that, that's a great point, and I wrote that down. I'll take that further, okay? Um, hybrid considered face-to-face. -face. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not the decider of that, Tisha, but I would imagine that you would at least get some credit, right? Um, how far in the evenings would be able to schedule? I mean, we, we can start an evening session even until 8 p.m., or you can, I mean, there's a lot of different evening uh, um, choices out there. Once you once I get them out there, you'll be able to see what you what your options are, Matilda. Um, I don't know anything about opting in to the OL. Um, not I, I know that they're still working on it, um, but I don't know any of the dates or anything like that. That's probably something more that might be discussed in, in Keith's crazy Thursday meetings. Um, uh, nine. Oh, I don't think that can happen, Clark. We can't mix, again, we cannot mix online students with residential students. I, not my rule, that's a university thing, but they cannot be intermixed. So they cannot be in the same section. And when you try to put them in the same section, registration team is just gonna rip that student out. So it's not gonna work. Um, yes, a hybrid course can be face-to-face -face one day and then synchronous online the, the other. That's happened. 
Ooh, Lori, don't know about that. I still think we need to stick with the standard University Times because that could impact a student neg negatively when if they need to schedule other courses um, those times. So that's something I'm going to have to get back to you on, but I'm thinking that's going to be a no. The provost office prefers, oh, I don't think they have a, um, the, the university really wants as much face-to-face, -face, um, and I, I don't think, I think they don't really want the synchronous online, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's something that you probably have to ask them, but from what I'm hearing, it seems like just given what I'm hearing, it seems like synchronous isn't working out the best, but um, above my pay grade. Back to Clark's question. They could have an LOL course for the nine and a residential course for the one and then merge in Brightspace, right? Or not? Oh, yes. Yes, Rex. They, that, that, but that's what Lisa's talking about, how you merge. And I guess I'm naive to, to Brightspace. I was just thinking that that's just where the one-stop shop for the content was. Uh, for both sections, so the, the instructor is not having to manage two different instances of Brightspace, one for a residential and one for online. They just put all the content out there and everyone can share it. But if they're also being, you know, synchronous, if they're requiring the OL sections to join in with the residential, I don't think that was the intent. And that definitely wasn't the intent between merging the sections of Brightspace. It's, that's just supposed to be for content. Um, uh, is there training for facts with uh, Tisha? No, I don't think so. Um, training for faculty specifically who are teaching a face to face, but will offer an all section. No, I mean, but that might be a good suggestion for the teaching and learning team that that the TL TLT or innovative learning. I think it's called innovative. So, sorry, I changed their name. I think it's called innovative learning. Now that might be a good suggestion for them, Tisha. I'm just curious how other scheduled deputies are hearing about this th from their faculty in the sense of uh, it's essentially teaching two classes and that's I mean depending on the size I mean even if it's a small size you're preparing regular live courses you know it's difficult to just make extra OL sections for our students and we want to do that because we clearly hear they would be opting in to the online cohort if we offered more courses but that's asking the faculty to teach Two different courses in one semester. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And Tripoli, we're not asking them to teach two different classes. We're asking them to record their lectures, put the lectures up on Brightspace, and then the asynchronous online can watch the lectures when it's appropriate. So that's yep. the way we're handling it, or we're asking our faculty to handle it. And and thank you. That was a that's a great point. I think that's actually okay. how it's intended to happen, but it's, it's difficult for labs though. If there's a yeah, if there's a partic participation for labs, that's where mm -hmm. it becomes tricky, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we, we bailed on labs and all of our labs are recorded and they're getting watched <laughs> by the students asynchronously. Okay, we, we tried okay. to go as low tech as possible this semester. Thank you, I appreciate the input. Okay, um, let's see, we were told we could not merge Brightspace since all students were not supposed to get boiler cast recordings. Oh, Clark, I don't know, news to me. That, that's not, I don't, I've never heard that rule, but I don't know. Okay, what else we got? This is fun. I feel like we're answering like so many questions. Come on, bring them on. We still have, oh my gosh, we're doing so great on time. We still have like 20 minutes. Um, Betty or Robin, are you getting any particular questions over and over that we haven't addressed? I am not. You're not, okay. Jill, can you convince Keith not to use WebEx on Thursday? <laughs> I can try. I don't like WebEx. That's why I wanted to do, to do Zoom. I actually prefer Teams, um, and I was going to set it up in Teams, but I don't think everybody is using Teams at the university for some reason. And so I was like, oh, I don't want to discourage, you know, people if they don't have Teams. Um, so I did Zoom. And I like Zoom better anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't, the problem is, is he didn't set those up, but yeah, we've talked about it in LT many times, like, please do something different with those meetings. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't have a problem, like, no one was um, not muted in our meeting. I thought our meeting at the beginning, I mean, I had, I had no problem. 
At least I don't think so. Maybe we did have a problem. I just don't know. Um, okay. Freshman nursing students is, oh, oh. Freshman nursing course is merging students in Bryce Place because we have six, uh, just an FYI. Is mer oh, yes, Susan, that's fine. They can be merged in Brightspace, but they cannot occupy the same registration section. So, yes, Susan, that's completely fine. Can we say that the grad class time is not available time for under and work with you? Can we say that the grad class time is not available time? I don't, Linda, can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, sure. So we have a schedule that's sort of set up for our grad classes. And usually we use a particular room, but it won't be big enough. So we're going to need a new room. Mm. Mm. And I need that schedule to sort of stay that way. Sure, but that sure. means the faculty who are teaching an undergraduate class, you know, we have to, we have to, you know, work that out. Right. Yeah. And so I was thinking of putting in their grad class time mm -hmm. as unavailable to you for their undergraduate class. Oh, oh, the system won't schedule. If you have the instructor listed on both se sections, the, uh, the system would not schedule them at the same time. Okay, and then, so then for the grad class, can I just put in, this is the preferred sure. time if you need that. I would write a note to us, put a note in there that this is like, has to be this time. Okay, it's only five classes. We're not talking sure. about a big deal. Sure, yeah. and, okay. do, and I think we talked about this earlier, Linda, because I think I said, would any of those people be willing to go in the yeah. evening? Yeah, okay, yeah. right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So to clarify, the next deadline is October 14th. Well, the next deadline for me, yes, is October 14th for all of your need room data entry. Need it by October 14th. When you're finished with it, email Betty, Jill, Robin, and let us know that you're done with your data entry. And then we're going to look at it all very holistically. We're looking at your projections, making sure that your enrollment is matching what should be out there. So again, make sure you're doing that. But as far as other deadlines, Learning Communities is this Friday and Physical Facilities, any new rooms for spring is this Friday as well. And if ABE, if Becky's on the uh, line, I have reached out to them three times now and I haven't heard back. So I'm, just, I'm trying, Becky. Um, yeah, everyone doesn't, yeah, everyone doesn't use Teams. If I put in a classroom or if I don't put in any classroom or building, will my faculty be all over campus? No, Phil, we do have a script that we run before we start doing the um, need room process that tries to put them in the, the general vicinity. But again, you could use, if you, didn't, if you don't necessarily care, but maybe you want to stay in a particular part of campus, you could use the room group preference like North Side, Central, Village, South, you know, if you wanted to. But no, we do do a script before that tries to keep it. Tries. Um, uh, okay, that's just a comment to Robin. Uh, oh, yes, Lisa, thank you. The OL sections also, we wanted you to decide what you were offering and what you weren't offering by this Friday. But as you and I all know, those decisions are probably still going to keep going. But that was for um, pre-registration. Since uh, students are out there doing the course request form, they really wanted kind of a date that kind of gave those students an opportunity to look to see what was being offered. But as we all know, we add courses and remove courses all the time. So yes, thank you, Lisa, for pointing that out. Um, can you remind us where we can find the OL projections? Uh, yes, I will, Steven. I'll show you, okay? So let me share my screen again. Um, Registrar's website. Can you guys see my screen? Shake your head, Tisha, if you can. Can you see the Registrar's website? Yeah, all right, great. Okay, and then faculty and staff reports, projection reports, and right here under spring 2021, right there is um, online learning course projections, and then the other three that Josie sent um, earlier this week. Okay, stop sharing. Let me go back. So great. All right. Rest of the schedule. So the rest of our schedule, like our clinicals, are due October 28th. Uh, yes, yes. Too many dates. Too many dates. Yes, you got it, Susan. The big one is going to be October 14th, because like I said, probably a, a lot of you are having a lot of your stuff in the need room. Um, so that's going to be your big, big deadline is October 14th. Is chemical engineering on the phone or on the phone, on the call? <laughs> yes, we're here. Okay, great. You heard me at the beginning call you out, right? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're checking those date patterns. 
Heard you loud and clear, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I meant it with kindness. <laughs> okay. Um, OL cohort classes still do this. OL cohort class. Oh, yeah. I think I just touched on that, Cindy. Um, what happens if all students decide to come to campus if we have not put them in a course and now we don't have a big enough room? Well, Susan, maybe. We're just going to do the best we can. Um, hopefully that would not be a lot. I don't, they're not, they're doing the OL cohort opting in and out a little differently. I don't think, as far as I'm hearing, I, and I think from Thursday, Keith touched on this, like they're not allowing new students to opt in. You just, you can stay opt in, but they're not allowing new students to opt in, so. Um, hey, this is Susan. Um, we only have six, oh. so it wouldn't be a big issue. I was sure. just curious if they decide yeah. to come to campus, we, we, would we have a room big enough for six more students? Sure, yeah, yeah. We only have six, so it's not a real okay. big deal. Yeah, but good point, thank you. When we will get the outro for need room data back to, oh great, TR, good question. Um, a week later by, um, so what is that? October 21, I think is the, let me look at my calendar real fast here. I think it's by, yeah, October 21. That's why I said it's gonna be a fast turnaround. So you're gonna get your need room back by October 21. And then a week later, your departmental rooms are gonna be due. So you should already be probably working on the course setup of those courses. And then it's gonna be a real, a real quick turnaround. Um, blah, 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 blah. three buckets again need room computer lab need room computer lab and departmental those are the three buckets we still do have um, CEC and EPE but if you don't know what that means not related to you um, blah, 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 blah. are they doing in-class prep again in-class prep what's that mean Clark in-class prep means we had to go in and um identify which students go into which app or in course planning tool in uh -huh. course planning tool yes that would that's still going to be used for spring and that would probably that but again it should be used very minimally because we're now trying to give you a room that you can fit in so that would be used for those high flex situation or courses that still want to teach over 150 but they can't all fit in a room okay but labs are reduced by half now so I then mean, yes I've got, a, I've got a class of 300 where 24 are in labs, so does that yeah. mean I need twice as many labs? Well, it would mean you'd be either twice as many labs or you're gonna have to rotate the students in and out. Then how do we accommodate TAs then? Because they're not allowed to work over 20 hours. Literally, I gotta give them four, I mean, I need twice as many TAs then. Well, I don't know. So then that would make me think that you need to rotate your students, right? If you can't have any more TAs, then you're going to have to rotate like this lab group's coming on Tuesday. How are you doing it right now? Uh, half the group go in the first hour and half go in the second hour. How is it working? Sucks. Oh, I'm sorry. Students hate it. And that's why I, I'll, I'll talk to you later about our okay. solution of the help lab. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll talk later, Clark. Okay. And then, and but if someone has a good suggestion for Clark, if they were also in that particular situation, let us know. This is also what's good, sharing ideas of what other departments have worked for them that could work for another department. So you heard Clark's concern. They don't have enough TAs. They're, they don't, they can't, they're just, rotating the students in and out is not working. Do you have a suggestion for him? Okay, um, we all know they're okay, yes. Oh, they have for fall. In the OL presentation, they have fall classes listed. Hmm, I don't know, Nina. Um, Josie worked on that. Maybe reach out they, to They her. actually do have the fall classes listed and it's really hard to figure out what it means. I'll get hold of Josie. Um, there, I know, I did look at the projections and there's a second tab that defines what the columns are. Would that help at all? Do you see that, Nina, at the bottom? There's a second tab. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't. This is Stephen. I would, I guess I was just looking at that. Yeah, there are courses that we only offer in fall that are listed on that projection. So, so are you, aren't you already talking to Josie about this today? I am. Stephen? I've got her this afternoon, so I'll, I'll follow up. And I can follow up with you after I talk to. You. That would be great because I'm I am confused at some of the because like for example, two ninety is never taught in the spring, like you just said, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's kind of out of my wheelhouse, but. 
something I wanted to pass along, but it's kind of out of my wheelhouse. So um, thank you, Stephen, for following up about that. Okay, I get you, Lisa. The OL projection report doesn't make sense. Yes, yeah, so Rex, it, again, we were just talking about that. So maybe, Stephen, you could follow up with Rex, too. He, he also can't make sense of the projection <laughs> report. Hey, uh -huh. your suggestion you have to Josie is that she email all the schedule deputies kind of like helping um, uh, sort through what that report means. Yep, I will do that. I'll talk to Josie. Okay. We'll figure it out. Great. See? Oh, this is so great. Look at us. We're like a little community here. Okay, do we have anything else? We're at 1019. I, you guys, tell me in the comments, has this been helpful for you to sit and listen and watch and hear other people's concerns? Has this been helpful? Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Awesome. Good. Okay, great. So do you think we should do another one? Or do you, um, do you think, I mean, how are you guys feeling? Let me know. I'm, I'm happy, and if you have suggestions for what you're needing help with and something you need me to show you, happy to do that too um, for another call. I mean, you know me, I can sit and talk all day if you want me to. <laughs> okay, well, if you guys have um, additional things that you're struggling with, or things you might, general questions that you think others might need help with as well, send, send, email them to me and we'll see if we can put together, if I have enough interest and enough topics, I'll put together another live session. Um, okay, let me see. Oh, what does it mean? Oh, I do see that. What does it mean for a flipped classroom? Wait, where did I see that? Did I just see that? Uh, who wrote that? I can't, it's gone now. You guys are sending too many, uh, <laughs> oh, right here, Rhonda. What does the term flipped classroom mean? I have no idea, Rhonda. Where did you hear that? Our faculty have been using that term, so I'm not sure what they mean. I can help out there. Great. Yeah, okay. help. I'll have Linda. I can help. Um, so a flipped classroom would mean that the faculty member would provide all the online content, maybe the lectures, lecture online, maybe videos of other things online and everybody can see that asynchronously but should do so prior to the class period that they're going to have so if you're going to teach a tuesday thursday they would watch all the things that they need on before tuesday then on tuesday they show up and they do an activity related to that so it's where they would do something like special maybe there's um, a discussion um, specific to the, what they saw online but the faculty member isn't lecturing in that space the lecturing happens offline uh, you know online and the in class experience is like high impact uh, interactive that supplements the online material Okay. So it's like a hybrid, right? It's a hybrid. Where it's yeah, is you have to you have to schedule as a hybrid then, because yeah, there's yeah. a distance component and a face to face component. Yeah. I would I I would probably say it's just a. Uh, I I think it depends on how the faculty member is going to do it, right? So okay. If the, the some faculty in my department might do it so that Tuesday, the time period for Tuesday would be all online, asynchronous, but you would do it then, whatever you want to do, and they're only going to meet once a week on Thursday. And that I would say would be hybrid. There are others that are gonna say, no, we're still meeting Tuesday and Thursday in a regular face-to-face -face, and that it's pedagogically flipped. In other words, it, their readings and the things that they're doing at home, their homework is this online stuff. And then in the classroom, it, it provides this other sort of material. So some of okay. the thought of as just plain old pedagogical and others it, like in my department are doing it in, in the other way, which is, know the 75 minutes is composed of online material and another 75 minutes in person and that would be the hybrid okay thank you mm. oh tr screenshots okay let me show you what i what i've been working on and tell me if this is going to fill your cup up if if i share this so like this is kind of what i was working on behind the scenes can you guys see my excel sheet here where can you guys see that tisha shake your head yeah so unitime view looks like this banner view looks like this and this is the default face to face unitime view is this banner view is this this is when lab lectures labs are online a fixed date and time like is this what you're wanting tell me more tr would this help you i'm not i can't look at the comments right now so if you're putting something in the comment i can't see it 
I You're getting it. positive comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I can certainly share that. That was just something I did on the side so I could keep it right in my brain and I could see the two views because, again, this is where it gets a little complicated when you have two different systems and they're, they're showing two different things. So I will send that out and share that right after this meeting. Happy to do it. Again, if you want more, send me what you want me to talk about. I don't know what you guys are feeling, what you're having problems with. You got to send them my way if you want more of this. Okay, any other additional questions? Concerns, questions, comments. Is there a place that lists the hybrid HyFlex online definitions? Um, great question, Mardell. That's what I was just refer that was what I was referring to earlier when I said we were thinking about hyperlinking um, on all the putting a note on all the sections and having a little hyperlink out to a document that describes each of those scenarios. So that's something that Holly Keckler in our office is working on. So I don't want to promise that it's going to happen, but it is being worked on right now where those where they're defining um, kind of like what those terms mean. Um, that's a yes. I my hope is that this schedule to me what we're doing for this schedule build is not a permanent thing. To me, it's a band aid we're doing revolving around COVID. Now I can't predict the future, but I would I can I know that Betty and Robin and I really want to go back to the old way of doing things. We can't do that when we have all this COVID stuff going on. So do I think this is permanent? Not at this time. I think this is a temporary solution. But I also don't want to make promises. Phil, that's exact. Thank you for reading. Phil, that's exactly what I want to talk to departments about. Um, because I envision, I'm thinking that, so Phil's talking about the OL subparts that I mentioned got approved, which I know hopefully Rex, Stephen, Phil, everybody's excited about. I'm, I felt like I was listening to hearing you guys, you know, be excited. But is, is it truly that you just need another CRN under the CRN? Or do you actually need the word lab and recitation? Because I was kind of hoping we could just put distance, distance and then distance, distance subpart and not have to put lab, recitation, arrange hours. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Do you think that's acceptable to just list uh, sub subparted distance sections underneath the main distance? For us, on our side, yes, it would be more confusing to the students. Perhaps didn't show different things, but you know, for managing managing our systems on the back end, yes, it doesn't matter what the, the schedule type is. We just need different CRNs. Okay, Phil. Uh, yeah, I don't care whether it's listed as lecture recitation. I it just the times I've tried to put a distance under a distance, it gives it the same CRN, and maybe I don't know how to force it to give them different CRNs. Okay, I'll look into that, Phil. I'll have, uh, I, can, I can look into that. Yeah, that's a good point because it's not a separate schedule type. Right, and I couldn't figure out how to change that. Okay, I'll look into it. Phil, can you also email me about your earlier concern that you had sent me? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Because there's a lot going on. I don't want to miss it. <laughs> um, what For else? Me, it might be easier to, to leave them labeled because what distance, you know, when I'm looking at three different words that say distance, which one's the lab, which one's the, you know. To yeah, me would be a little I understand. I get that. But I was thinking that they only needed CRNs to match with, they just, to, that's why I wanted to talk about it further. I don't want to make assumptions of what is actually being needed. So um, I'd actually, rather have one CRN and have all the three sections, you know, whatever it is you're splitting out under one, because you okay. know, just think about our, our 218. When we yeah. In there. Students yeah. have five CRNs they have to put in to get the class, yeah. right, you know, to get everything they need yeah. for the class. It'd be nice to have one CRN and just say, you, this is where you go at this time. But to me, just saying distance just get a little confusing for all the things we have to do. Okay. Okay, Kyle, is there a good place to look to find new classroom configurations since a lot has been, oh yeah, that's not updated in unit time because someone would have to of all that but I thought there was a SharePoint that the provost office was maintaining with all the configurations does anyone know anything about what I'm talking about there was an Excel spreadsheet that was sent out before the fall semester started and that's the only place I've seen it and I probably couldn't find it now because I've gotten so many emails so let me um, also mark that as a to do to look and I'll send that on to everybody if I can locate that um, yeah. 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 Is that from Jaylene? I have one. It's a SharePoint of, for classrooms with social distancing from Jaylene. 
Um, maybe. Well, let's take a look at that together after the meeting and okay. then we can send it out. Um, okay. you guys know, I, also, um, a lot of people were asking me questions. Oh, this is a good thing. Really quick. There's a lot of people asking me questions about technology in the classroom. So let me share my screen again real fast and let me show you. I added something to our website. Okay, so we're going um, scheduling and then a very at the very bottom of scheduling classroom technology. This talks about what is in all of the classrooms. So uh, because we're not in charge of the technology in the classrooms. So um, IT is or ITAP. So they put together this website that talks about um, everything that's in all the classrooms. Okay, so this is uh, might be something handy for you guys to have. Okay, all right. I think we're out of time, but wow, you guys, this was awesome. I feel like it helped. I hope it helped you. I think it went very well. So send me your ideas for new topics for another one and I'll get another one on the books for next week if I have enough topics, okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and, and the rest of the week, okay? As always, reach out to us if you need anything. See ya.